Now to the properties of covalent bonds. The first one is bond length. Bond length is the distance between atomic centers involved in a chemical bond. Beaker atoms produce longer bonds. If we are to compare the bond of carbon with halogens such as fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine, we will notice that as we go with increasing atomic size, the bond length also increases. More electrons shared between atoms that is, higher bond order, shortens the bonds. Single bond is much longer if you will compare it to double bond, and triple bond is very short. That is if we compare the same pairs of atoms. The nearer to the nucleus, the bonding orbital, the shorter the bond. You should know that S orbitals are much closer to the nucleus compared to the p orbitals. And so, if there are more s character in your bond, the bond tends to be shorter. What does s character mean? As you know, sp3 hybridized orbitals contain three parts p and one part s. This is about 25% S. Since there are more P character, the bonds tend to be longer. And as we increase the S character from sp3 to sp2 to sp, which has 50% S character, the bond length decreases. Take note that it's best to compare the same pairs of atoms. On to bond dissociation energy. BDE is the enthalpy required to break a given bond of some specific molecular entity by homolysis. This is equal to the amount of energy liberated when the same bond is formed. Bond dissociation energy is related to bond strength. The higher the BDE, the stronger the bond. We can say, for example, that a double bond has higher BDE than a single bond because double bond are considered to be stronger. We can also make comparisons by bond length. The shorter the bond, the higher the BDE. So for the case where there is more S character to the bond, it will be shorter and the bond dissociation energy will tend to be higher. Rotation around single bonds is allowed, but restricted around double bonds. If we are to consider this compound here with a double bond at the middle carbons, the single bonds here can rotate freely because it's only connected to this carbon by a sigma bond. However, these two carbons will have restricted rotation because it has pi bonds between them. If we allow the interchange or rotation, of this carbon and this hydrogen, if we allow this to rotate, this bond will be misaligned and will break. And breaking a bond requires a lot of energy. So rotation is not allowed in double bonds. Bond angle is the angle between two bonds to an atom. Now electrons repel each other according to the valence shell electron pair repulsion model. If there are only two groups of electrons around a central atom, these electrons will tend to be as far apart from each other as possible. And in an sp hybridized carbon, this bond angle is 180 degrees. For an sp2 hybridized carbon, the bond angles are about 120 degrees. For an sp3 hybridized carbon, the bond angle is around 109.5 degrees to accommodate all the four electron groups around the central atom. 
Now, if non-bonding electrons are present, it will repel more. In the case here for nitrogen, also with an electron group geometry that is tetrahedral, similar to this carbon here, but the lone pair will push the electrons in the bond between nitrogen and hydrogen closer to each other and reduce the typical angle from 109.5 to 106.7 degrees. Oxygen in water has two lone pairs and in this case the band angle is even smaller. Now in these models that we have here, we can also compare the bond length between a triple bond, a double bond, and a single bond, which clearly show an increase in length. Also, the bond length between an sp hybridized carbon to hydrogen has about 1.06 angstrom bond length, and it will tend to increase as the S character decreases. More electronegative atoms pull more electron density, causing polar covalent bonds. Here is a list of electronegativity values according to the polling scale. As you know, fluorine is the most electronegative atom. If we are to look at the trends, the electronegativity of atoms increase from left to right and from bottom to top. A polarized bond is a dipole, the direction of which is indicated by a dipole arrow. Electronegative atoms in a bond tend to pull electrons towards itself as indicated by this arrow. It will have a partial negative charge because of the increase in electron density. And there will be a partial positive charge on the atom that lost electron density. The bond between hydrochloric acid is polarized because chlorine is more electronegative than hydrogen. In this case, we will have this dipole arrow moving towards the direction of chlorine. Hydrogen will have a partial positive charge and chlorine will have a partial negative charge. For the case of the CO bond, oxygen is more electronegative than carbon, so we will have this dipole arrow going towards the direction of oxygen. A partial positive charge is on carbon, and a partial negative charge is on oxygen. Molecular polarity depends on bond polarity and molecular shape, and this is expressed as the by a measure of dipole moment. Example here is water. The bond between oxygen and hydrogen is polarized because oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen. And in this way, you will have an overall charge towards oxygen and a measured dipole moment of 1.85 dBi. Carbon dioxide is a linear molecule. There's a dipole moving towards the direction of the oxygen atoms. And since this dipole can cancel each other, carbon dioxide has a dipole moment of 0 dBi. For this compound, methyl chloride, chlorine is more electronegative than carbon, and so there will be a net imbalance of electron density moving towards chlorine. It has a dipole moment of 1.87 dBi. If we are to compare this to carbon tetrachloride, a carbon connected to four chlorine atoms in a tetrahedral arrangement, all bonds between carbon and chlorine are polarized, but their arrangement will counteract each of the effects of these polarized bonds, and its measured dipole moment is 0 dBi.